Hi, my name is Nancy McGee, San Mateo County Superintendent of Schools. Today, you're going to get an inside look at the world of engineering and architecture design in San Mateo County. We are going to start by taking a tour of some of our exceptional engineering and design CTE programs, and then we'll hear from real world industry experts who will provide valuable insight into the opportunities, wages, and skills needed to succeed in a career in engineering and architecture design. These CTE pathways provide students with the educational opportunities needed to prepare them for success in careers in engineering and architecture design. And now, without further ado, let's take an inside look into some of our fabulous CTE programs. I want to go into architectural design because I really like drawing and designing things. I think it's really cool that um, you know we can design things for people and we can like we can make our own thing based on what they want. Um, I've been interested in this for a long time um, since you know I was I was a little kid playing with Legos. I think it's a really exciting area because there are so many different ways students can go. You can work on building design. You can work on all different types of buildings, residential, commercial. Uh, public buildings, and there are lots of ways to specialize. Uh, some students go into the engineering side, some more are into the design side, some are more interested in interior design. So far we've done one project. Um, it was redesigning the classroom, you know, seeing how we can make a creative design space, how we can, you know, cater to everyone's needs. Like some people, they like to work individually rather than with a group, some people like to work with a group. Um, so it was like catering to everyone's needs and it was like seeing uh, who could come up with the best design that worked for everyone. I think that students should be interested in careers in engineering because it really represents skills where you're solving problems, um, where you're making the world a better place, uh, creating a product that has value. Well, the cool thing about this class is everything um, can be learned. Um, a lot of students are worried about their lack of drawing experience, their lack of model um, or hands-on type things. That is something that can easily be developed in these classes. For anybody interested in taking this course, I would definitely recommend them to go through with it because even if they aren't particularly uh, inclined to a career in engineering, uh, they can definitely benefit from the skills and the experience from taking this course. So it's a project-based class, so the class will look different depending on what project we're working on. Students may be learning how to do architectural drawings. Um, they may be learning how to do uh, 3D modeling in Revit, which is a building information modeling or BIM software. Um, they may be building physical models um, or are presenting their work. So I took Architecture 1 my freshman year and then Architecture 2 my junior year. Um, and it's been really fun. We've learned um, hand drawings, we've learned some computer modeling technology like Revit. Um, we've been able to build physical models for some of our design competitions. Um, it's just a really good way to kind of be creative in a way that um, isn't traditional, I suppose. A typical day in my class is um, a real mix of uh, variety. So the students um, jump right into projects where they are building, um, but it's going back and forth, uh, giving them the theoretical background. Um, there's uh, some group group work, but then there also are also our specific tutorials. Uh, they'll be up out of their seats, uh, building something. Some of them will be staying working on uh, things at their desk as well. We've learned how to construct a robot and also how to um, modify and upload code to make the robot do certain things. Uh, in terms of technical skills, students learn how to create architectural drawings, um, plan drawings, elevation sections, and perspectives, axonometrics. Um, and then they also learn the 3D modeling program. So we use Revit, which is building information modeling or BIM software. So students learn how to create a 3D model and get architectural drawings from that. Um, in terms of soft skills, we do a lot of teamwork skill building, communication skills, time management, project management, 
Um, students also practice their interviewing skills and presentation skills, so whenever we have a project, students present not only to each other and to me, but also to our industry professionals who come in as guest reviewers. Definitely, some of the soft skills that I've picked up in this course uh, include communication. We have to work in partners or as a table group, so we definitely need to communicate a lot. And also, I've learned a lot about problem solving and how to adapt the situation to fit uh, the specific needs. Well, the cool thing I tell the students, um, like from day one, is that even if they don't end up being an architecture, an engineer, the skills they learn in these classes, the communication, the drawing, the teamwork, um, even working with tools is something that they can use later on in life. I'm Lauren Berman. I am a civil engineer and I work for BKF Engineers, which is a civil design firm. Growing up, I was always a hands-on person. In eighth grade, I won a science contest about a suspension bridge, and that gave me the confidence to be an engineer. So the typical day for a civil engineer is really collaborative. I could be working on this commercial campus project one day, but then a residential project another day. And I'm fortunate enough to have different projects all happening at once, and I kind of get that variety. So once you have maybe eight, 10 years of experience um, as a civil engineer, you may become a project manager. So I'm, I'm a project manager for BKF Engineers, and my day-to-day -day is a little different from an entry-level engineer's. I get to be a part of a lot of meetings, and in those meetings, I help consult and advise as the civil engineer on a project, and, and really work to pull all the consultants together to build and design a finished product for our client. One misconception in our industry, especially for civil engineering, is that civil engineers are all men. That's not true. Um, case in point, I am a female and I am a civil engineer. And civil engineering and development is a viable career path for a woman. Another misconception in our industry is that you have to be extremely smart to be a civil engineer. It's just algebra, trigonometry, some common sense, problem solving, um, and interpersonal skills. Civil engineering is a great physical science. It's a great way to have a hand in creating something and then literally seeing it get built. We are so fortunate to be near Silicon Valley, the tech capital of the world, that we have such a variety of job opportunities when it comes to development. Uh, me, myself, I work on corporate campuses for tech companies. I work on high-density residential. I work on public parks. And there's so much happening in Silicon Valley that we really get to touch a lot of aspects in, in life. Interviewing for an entry-level engineering job is, is actually not as complicated as I originally thought it was going to be. You really just need basic math skills, so algebra, a little bit of trigonometry, and you just need to be coachable. My first day on the job, I, I was asked to rotate text in AutoCAD, and I had no clue how to do it, but luckily, my team was such a collaborative team that someone taught me how to do something in AutoCAD and then I just, I was able to do it. Problem solving is, is kind of one of those things that we do every day. Uh, ultimately, we have to solve problems when it comes to grading, utility layouts. Being able to have the confidence that you can problem solve 
um, is, is kind of the key to problem solving here. An entry level position roughly starts at around 80,000, 90,000 um, in this metropolitan area. You reach a higher salary once you're a tenured engineer and that could be in the high 100,000s. Civil engineering and architecture is a reliable industry because there's always a need for either new development or repairs and maintenance on existing infrastructure. If a young woman came up to me and told me that they were interested in becoming a civil engineer, I would tell them to go for it. I would say you have nothing to lose. Diverse thoughts and diverse perspectives in our industry really make us better problem solvers. On behalf of San Mateo County Office of Education's Career Technical Education Programs, I want to thank you for joining us today. Students and families can learn more about engineering and architecture design courses at smcoe.org slash CTE. Thank you for exploring the world of career technical education.